not everything is for us. If you don't like something, that's fine. There's plenty of other things for you to like. But there's a difference between not liking something and voicing that and just bullying someone. Welcome to Cyprus and welcome to the first in a new segment called Tea and Empathy. It's a little take on tea and sympathy. It's a little nod to the fact that I am a British person. We supposedly love tea. Look at this. Hi. I'll leave you alone now. Bye-bye. Cheers. No one else is here at all. So, off we go to see the sunset. My idea for this new series, Tea and Empathy, is to just spend some time hanging out with you and for things to be a bit more casual, a bit less editing-y, so that it's easier to make these videos and I can do them more regularly. I love the idea of Q&A videos, but I also think that they can just be so wide ranging in topic that it's quite hard to kind of get across in the title, for instance, what they are. So I was trying to think of alternative ways to answer your excellent questions. And I think this is going to be a really good one, but not in this episode. No, no. Met these friends the other day. So in the next Tea and Empathy, I will start answering your questions. But in this episode, I wanted to extend my empathy towards a fellow artist known as Billy No Mates. I've never met Tor. We both live in Bristol, but I don't know anyone in Bristol really, uh, apart from about three people and uh, they're not Tor. She played Glastonbury the other day, which is an incredible achievement. Should be a really exciting thing and cause for huge celebration. And it was televised, which is wonderful because lots of people play festivals and it's not televised. So wonderful that she was chosen to have footage done and shared of her. And then the abuse began. Hang on, we've got ourselves a sunset. I have a question. How is it still light when the sun has gone down below the horizon? Answers in the comments, please. Thank you. I've experienced negative online comments not loads. I am just known enough to make a living from this, but not enough to have floods and floods and floods and floods of hate that I have to read every day. And when I say I have to read every day, technically no, we don't have to read these comments. But if we don't read any comments, then we don't get to read positive comments. It's very easy to say, just don't read the comments, move on, whatever. But that kind of feedback is part of being an artist these days. I respect Tor for speaking up, for sharing her thoughts when things like this happen. There was so much of it that she asked Six Music to remove, I believe the social posts that referred to her performance. I hope not the actual footage of the performance because that's such a great thing to have for new people to get into her. I think it would be a real crying shame if that was also removed. And it's been really nice seeing some of the positive support that she's been getting. But I've also seen some interesting comments from people saying, well, music criticism is very important. And to that I say, well, yes and no. Is that an animal or a rock? I thought this was a llama. <laughs> That's just a rock. Let's not pretend that a bunch of angry people being really aggressively mean about someone on the internet that's not music criticism. And saying you don't like something is also fine, but there's a difference between not liking something and voicing that and just bullying someone. And the problem is, 
We all have these phones, scrolly, scrolly, scrolly. So there's not really anything we can do about these things other than put up our boundaries. And that's what Tor has done, and I do respect her for that. She made a very good point about the amount of abuse she's had to endure just for going to work. Can we remember, please, that she was given a slot at Glastonbury Festival, and that is not an easy thing to get. Those slots are very hard to come by, and in the minds of whoever booked her, she has earned that spot. So whether you like her music or her performance or anything about her or not, she was given a slot at Glastonbury Festival. I've always found it utterly baffling how badly support bands are treated by the majority of audiences. Those support slots aren't given out willy-nilly either. And the headline band, the one that you paid to go see, the one that you might have loved for your whole life, they at the very least had sign-off on that act, if not specifically chose them out of a bunch of people who were vying for that slot. So can we just have a little bit of respect, please? I'm on my holidays, so I haven't read all of the horrible comments and I haven't read all of the positive comments, obviously. Why on earth would I do that to myself? But for anyone who thinks that dealing with negative comments is just part of the job of an artist, you might be interested to know that most of us aren't full-time and we're not making very much money. So it's not like we're rolling in dough, elevated up on a pedestal somewhere, walking the red carpet. Most artists, even the ones you've heard of, are scraping a living. We're honestly not paid enough to take that much shit. It is getting dark now. It's really lovely here, isn't it? Most of the music fans I come into contact with, because of the way I do things, are really sound. They know about supporting artists further than just streaming their music. They buy music, they buy merch, they're nice and quiet when we perform because they've actually bought that ticket to listen to the music. So I'm not having a go at you. I just wanted to send some love to Billy No Mates. I'm really sorry this is happening to you. Your Glastonbury triumph should have been just that, a triumph. It is a triumph, and I hope you can throw the bad parts of this experience in the bin where they belong, and really take to heart all of the wonderful positive comments that are pouring in from people who get you. And can we all please remember, not everything is for us. If you don't like something, that's fine. There's plenty of other things for you to like. And maybe one of those things will be this video that I made in a village hall in Shirehampton, North Bristol, wearing a cardboard box robot costume that I made in my kitchen. I don't know if you know this, but uh, you're a porcupine. <laughs>